friends. Loving. Laughing. And learning together. Sharing stories, one life at a time. So grab a seat. Welcome to Joni Table Talk. Well, life can be full of unexpected twists and turns, but what can seem like a random series of events can often be God setting you up for success beyond anything you could ever imagine. With the help of today's special guest, we'll show you what's possible when you put your trust in God, even when the circumstances are stacked against you. But first joining me around the table is Rachel Lamb Brown. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> you know, I always love a good love story, and this yeah. one is particularly special to us because this is one of our new family members. That's right. It's Rebecca. So Rebecca Lamb Wise, are you excited? I am. To I hear love the love, this the guest. love story of your in their story. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we've heard bits and pieces of it, but I, it's always a blessing to talk about marriage. And you are now how long married? Uh, just few months? Almost four months. Almost four months. Like just a few days away. And how's that working out for you? I love it. <laughs> okay, that's, that's good. I can that's start good. a tour advocating for parents. <laughs> oh, that's right. I love it. I love it. How are you, Cindy Murdoch? I'm doing great. You, we, we like a good love story. I love a good story. And I want an extraordinary marriage. So anything I can learn to Add some gold nuggets in. Bolster it up. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm always ready. Extraordinary. <laughs> we do want that. Catherine oh, Weiss, welcome. Thank you. Back to the table. Back to the table. Thanks for having me. And now yeah. she's in the seat of honor. Oh. Now yes. you're in the hot seat. I'm in the hot seat. Story. I'm missing my, my wingman, but that's okay. <laughs> yes. yes. We girls are going to have fun. Well, Catherine and her husband, Miles, have been in ministry for nearly 30 years, serving as missionaries, pastors, and television host, and for the past 25 years, they've also counseled thousands of couples. And today, Catherine is here to share how you can have a marriage full of peace, love, and purpose. Speaking of marriages, we have to talk about a little bit about yes. the marriage that just took place. Oh, the amazing. marriage of Jonathan oh and Rebecca. And uh, you had a little peace in that even way back way that back. our viewers may not even know about. They may about. not know that I saw Rebecca on, I think it was on Marcus and Joni's show. I think it was when you came back from Africa and God oh, highlighted wow. you in my heart and, and something said, that's the one. Because I've been praying for my boys for years to find their soulmate and, and there you were. And I'm like, Miles, I think I, this is it. <laughs> and he's like... Nice, nice. I don't think so. <laughs> and I even tried to get Jonathan to watch this. And Jonathan he's like, comes to the room and you're he's like, like you, what did I you say? say? You said, you I want that. for a minute. I yeah. want that. <laughs> I want that. That's the one for you. That, I want that one. And he was like, Mom. He's like, I'm not going to find my person, my, my, my wife on TV. <laughs> How is that going to happen? That is so and yet funny. he did. That's you right. have to be That's careful right. to, about what you tell God. It is not going to do because he has a funny way of turning that around. He does. He does. He does. Yeah. So you're your, your um, favorite moment of the wedding, there were so many. Oh, uh, well, I think it was, I think it was their vows to each other. Their vows to each other. Because they were yeah. so deep. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I love, you know, I love all the symbols that we brought forth and all the, the reflection of who God is and what yeah. he's doing. Yeah. But it was and their the Jewish heart to heart. Yes. Mixed with the, yeah. with the yes. uh, Christian. Yes. yes. Yeah. I love that. Rachel, what was your favorite moment? Um, there's two. One was when uh, Rebecca kind of helps uh, put the music together for when the little kids walk down yeah. the aisle Aww. and surprise Jonathan. Yes. That music was so pretty. That was great. Um, and that was Jewish, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. Joan and Asky helped too. So, <laughs> yeah. so that was really, I know that meant a lot to Jonathan. And then Rebecca's vows, like I, mm -hmm. they were so good and they're just really poetic. Aww. And I know she really... It was hard for her. She was like waiting, you know, and just waiting for it to come. And then when it did, it was just like an instant download. But it was, yeah. it was really good. I know you've had that when you're writing before, those Holy yes. Spirit downloads. It's moments. like you're trying to get it, and yes. it's not coming. And then he's just like, All of a sudden, I've done that so with the song. It was so stressful until it came. And then I was like, it's here. I was I've so done, happy. I've done that with songs before. I mean, I, yeah. I've worked with Joe, and we'd just be in there, and all of a sudden, something great yeah. would come. Your favorite moment, <laughs> there were so many. What was your favorite? Well, when I watched your wedding special, my favorite moment is communion. Yes. Okay. And I love the song that they sing. Yeah, that yes. was a great moment. Your and I like moment. when the rose petal cannon goes off and Jimmy Evan goes, well, that's exciting. Yeah. That's that was so special. You know, my favorite moment, because my heart's starting to beat fast just thinking about it, but when the, when the doors Aww. swung open wide yes. and you see 
the bride. You yeah. see Aww. Rebecca standing there and the light behind her. It was like a princess yeah. moment, you know? And then when the camera goes to yeah. Jonathan and his yes. dad and he yeah. like starts like crying. Is, oh my gosh. Yeah. It just, it does something yes. because that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. and it was right. representative of Jesus coming yeah. for us one day, the bride, the bride of Christ. Right. And so that's does, why he comes is it halfway. Time? Is yeah. it time? I love that. I love that part. Oh. Well, Rachel and Cindy and me all agree like our favorite moment. So guess what? We're going to show you our favorite oh, moment right yeah. now. can be seated. All right, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. Of course, you can see the, the whole wedding special, I'm sure. Um, that demand. will be available on demand. On demand. On demand. Oh, so for those of you that didn't get to see it, yeah. but oh my goodness, Rachel, it's so funny. You and I, we like the same. I know. I that know little girl I singing know. in Hebrew. That was so and cool. what was she saying, Becca? That, that was she singing? Baruch Ata Adonai, blessed is he comes the, in the name, name of the Lord. Lord. Oh my goodness, oh, that's so awesome. Yes. <laughs> that's just, uh, the fact that I knew that. Yes. <laughs> very good, Becca. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So let's go to another love story because if this love story hadn't happened. That couldn't have happened. That's yeah. true, Amen. right? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go back and hear a little bit about your growing up and okay. Miles growing up. Maybe All we'll right. start with Miles, raised in a traditional Jewish home? Co yes, conservative Jewish home, uh, bar mitzvah. He went to, you know, synagogue. They even had a synagogue named after him. You know, they had their pews. But there was an emptiness that he didn't, he didn't find filled outside of, he was looking for something greater than himself, the power greater than himself. Yeah. And so he, his father died when he was young and um, his mom had some trouble because she'd had a couple miscarriages and she'd lost, she'd lost uh, a child. So she was in her own pain. And so after his dad died. He had a sister. He had a sister. And so it was an just, older sister. Yeah. Uh, and there was a miscarriage in between and she just never could get, work through that. And so, but there was, 
Miles was the promised son. He was yeah. the son, and all that weight came on him real strong, though, mm -hmm. after his father died. And so he says he took a hard left after his bar mitzvah and wound, went into the new age, went into seeking peace. Like, he went into, like, all of oh, these yes. different... Oh, yes, Buddhism. Yes. Eastern religions. Hinduism. Well, he was... I would say he was a Hindu when I met him. Wow. Yeah. wow. So he was... He, was, he, he wasn't... Um, he wasn't saying yeah. that he was a Hindu, but he believed that, you know, he was, you know... And yeah. he was raised in New York, so he was in that kind of, you know, rough and tough city life. Yes, yes. Which also In helped. Queens... Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah in Queens, and you, of course, were raised in. I was, I was raised Catholic, so I was. I in was, what state? Oh, California. California. So it was oh, a New York okay. Jew and a California oh, Catholic. Wow. So this is like already thinking. Too okay, far. how in the world yeah. can these two people get together? Okay. So did you make it to New York, or did Miles make it to California? He came to California. He was following the California dream. So his oh, wow. dream brought him to California. He was looking for peace, uh -huh. and he says he tried everything. He tried the pills. He tried, you know, he tried meditating in yeah. the desert. He tried whatever he could, and he said when he was out there, he said, you know, I found out that I was at two with the universe. So, but you know, his life progressed and he he had a you know he had a good career or whatnot and he was studying and um so he lived in california and i was born and raised in california i was born a catholic and you know a, a great foundation wonderful loving family mm -hmm. but still there's a void until you receive god personally for yourself mm -hmm. and you let jesus forgive you of your son i say he came from a defeated uh, savior on a cross to a risen savior mm -hmm. who actually began to fill my life and make me whole. You have to tell this one story that I love though. You grew up in Catholic church and yes. you felt a call to ministry at a young age, but what did you tell God? I actually felt the call of God in the Catholic church. So I, I, I want people to know I really respect yeah. the Catholic mm -hmm. church. And I felt the call of God, but I said, I just don't like those outfits. <laughs> you were like, I don't want to be a nun. No, you said and I, I want to be married. I yeah. want to be married, and yeah. I knew I needed. I knew I was supposed to have sons. <laughs> wow. So wow. it was, wow. it was a call, yeah. and that God. And then when I got saved, so it's the first time I heard the gospel, I got saved. So the tell first us about time. that first. Yeah. Day. So first the first time. time. So I was, you know, I, I graduated from college, and I was seeking myself because the school was never easy for me, and you know, I was just seeking for my own self. You know, I dabbled in drugs too, and that was very painful, and I didn't want to go there. So I cried out to God. You know, I said, I need your help and so I was working in the city at the time and this wonderful Filipino lady said to me she said the first, the most basic gospel she said you know you're here and God's here and Jesus sent God sent his son Jesus to be the bridge to have eternal life do you want that do you know you're a sinner well, thank God for the Catholic Church. I knew I was a sinner. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. I had said a fib before. I picked up something I shouldn't. So I knew I needed a Savior. And so he came into my life. And So you said yes. She, and I she prayed yes. with you right there? Right then and there. Oh, my goodness. Right then and there. That just shows the, the, the power something? of that, yeah. of, of being a witness wherever you are. You don't mm -hmm. have to be in a church. Right. You mm -hmm. can lead someone to Jesus right, right there. The Holy Spirit gives you that moment. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how did your life change? And did you get involved in a church? I, well, then I moved back in with my parents and I started continuing more schooling. So then I moved back into... Did your parents notice a difference? Yes. In I the, was going to ask where they... And they well, they, it wasn't it? until I got into the church that they thought I was in a cult. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so they they were happy, and I was telling them. So they were they were very supportive because uh -huh. they wanted me to be you know moving forward in my life. Uh, so then through, Miles and I met through mutual friends, and it was on our first date that I said you know uh, something personal, something really personal has just happened to me. Jesus has become my Lord and so Savior. So how did you even meet him? Was we it met college? through mutual friends? Oh, through mutual friends. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we were both trying to stay away from drugs and alcohol, and so we were meeting through. Oh. Okay. Safe people and safe, yeah. safe environments. So and you went to a coffee shop. We went to a coffee shop. And I remember when you started talking to him about Jesus. Well, that was when we first met. And then he took me out on the first date. I okay. said, you know, here we are. He was into like real organic everything. And he was like the Hindu thing. So yeah. oh, wow. he was in the good earth. Right. Oh wow! And here I am, this new believer, and I just said, you know, something, per something's really happened to me, and if I'm going anywhere, I'm going to go with what God has put in my heart. And Jesus has become very personal to me, and so I need you to know that He's, you know, He's my Lord and Savior. And He's like, shh, just don't say it in here. Oh. <laughs> he's like, shush. He shushed me, yeah. and I said, hey, I'll shout it from the housetops because I was just bold and. Uh, 
just really alive in yeah. God. And so then it was that he said, well, that's nice for you. Uh, you know, you're a nice Catholic girl. He still was thinking that mm -hmm. I was Catholic. And he says, I'm Jewish, you know, and, I, and so I was like, and I had to file that away for the conversation because it never crossed my mind that a Jewish per person couldn't receive his Messiah. So this was all new to me. Yeah. So that very next day, I get down on my knees, I prayed, I said, Jesus, can you save a Jewish person? I mean, literally, I got down on my knees in my wow. little room, and I felt the Holy Spirit said, not only can I save a Jewish person, but I am a Jew. And not only can I save a Jewish mm -hmm. person, but I am a Jew. <laughs> yeah. By the way, wow. Jesus yes. uh, was Jewish. Yes. Yes. So, that's so then amazing. that next day on my college campus, um, I was walking to class and somebody handed me a, a, a track saying about Jews for Jesus. Wow. So God began to confirm. Wow. And then I asked Miles, you know, I said, you know, God wants to reveal himself to you. I was so bold. I said, if you just <laughs> ask him, he will. And so he began to ask. It helped that you're a pretty little thing. I just want That's to <laughs> Did you tell Miles? Because he really liked you. So he wanted to keep going out with you. Yes. You know, when you dropped the Jesus bomb, he yes. was kind of like, oh my goodness. Did you tell Miles what the Lord had revealed to you? What was his response to that? I don't think I did until later on. It yeah. was one of those things that you just tucked in your heart. But what I did yeah. tell him, that, that God would reveal himself to you. And I said, I, that is your book, you mm -hmm. know. And, you know, God, like, like you're saying, even the newest born babe in, in the Lord or a new mm -hmm. believer, God can just begin to give you truth that you didn't know that you knew. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so... That so you challenged him to read his own book. Yes, and he did. And he got really, he got really um, upset that he didn't know the rest of the story wow. because he'd read the, 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 old, the, old, the old Testament. Testament. Mm -hmm. that, and um, he's like, wow, this whole thing is Jewish. Wow. Jesus is Jewish. His mom and dad were Jewish. And so he began to really wow. seek. So he starts reading. He how, starts reading. How soon after that did it? Stir up a hunger. He, right away, he'll say, I spoke to the ceiling. Because, you know, Jewish people have to come over a huge uh, barrier yeah. of receiving Jesus. So he actually even said, he prayed in the name of J.C. Wow. Because he could feel his mom, he said, or his grandma rolling over in the grave, just even mentioning the name of Jesus, because yeah. so many things that were done to Jews in the name of Jesus, oh, wow. it was something that he needed to, you know, make sure that um, he asked. And God, that next day, um, God sent him guidance. He was at the same college campus, and he was sitting on his brand new car, and he was eating his little <laughs> organic salad. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that sound like? Oh, my gosh. It sounds like Jonathan. He makes the best salad. Yes, okay, he, he does. does make the best salad. So, and this gentleman, he, Miles said he looked like the strangest person walking up to him. But he said, you know, uh, excuse me, uh, um, you know, um, I just wanted to come over and say hi and, you know, I like your car. And then he said, well, but wait, the real reason why I came over here is that you've been praying for guidance. Wow. And the Holy Spirit spoke back the very prayer that Miles had prayed wow. to him personally. Mm -hmm. And he said the wind picked up and began to blow, and he knew at that moment that his whole life had culminated to that moment in time. Wow. Okay, okay. so then did he go to a church and pray? Did so he... that same man, James okay. Trumbo, yeah. and he's in heaven now. Aww. And I just heard from his beautiful wife, and she's doing well. But he was a pastor, and he was seeking the Lord, and he invited us to a church. So we got saved in, like, revival. We were at the tail end of the Jesus movement. Mm -hmm. So we were, like, always having meetings, and they said, hey, we're having a prophet come. Come to the meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, we said, okay, you know. So we began to go to this church, you know, and that's when my Miles got called from Paul Kane. So Paul Kane was actually <laughs> leading the service. Who yes. he was just here with yeah. us, by the yeah. way. Yeah. I don't know if you got to see that show or not. Very interesting because he's up in his eighties now. Yes. Okay, so he was there, and he had a word of knowledge. He had a word of knowledge for Miles, which again is one of the nine gifts of the Spirit. Yes. You can read yes. about that in Corinthians. So, yes. what did he say? Well, Miles, at that point, he had he had said the sinner's prayer. So he had met with he had mm -hmm. really said the sinner's prayer, but he was still searching out like, what does mm -hmm. this mean for my life? And Paul Kane said, he said, there's a young man named Miles. There's a young man named here, Miles. That's a very unusual name. And so he, and, and Miles was like, is there a, is there a chord somewhere? You know, because he was still skeptical. Yeah. But he said, come forward, come out from your seat and come forward. And then the Lord was calling him to, into ministry. And he said, you haven't fit in anywhere because you don't belong anywhere but in the body of Christ. And he Aww. said. I bet that meant so much to Yes, because he was seeking. Yeah. Wow. And God was saying, no, this is for you too. 
Okay. Okay, so how long before you actually got married? And tell me about okay, what, so what that was is it Nana and... Nana and Granddad. And Granddad yep. are doing at this point, which is your mom and dad. That's what Jonathan okay. calls them. There's a yeah. lot of change happening. Yeah. Yeah. Radical <laughs> change. And there's a big age difference. And so they're watching over their daughter. I had been dating a socialite. They're kind of from a socialite background. Yeah. Their, their bet was on him, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. he'll have a great life. And and here I come with this Jewish man, <sighs> and she said, you'll have persecution your whole life because she was aware of the Holocaust. Yeah. And I said, Mom, no, I'll have the blessing of God. Mm. Oh, wow. And and I hadn't, God gave so me that. So you even had an understanding God gave it to me supernaturally. Yeah. When yeah. I got down on my knees <laughs> and prayed, I said, no, I'm going to have the blessing of God. And so, um, so then we, so, so mom and dad, I think Miles met with Nana and asked permission because she was the one that was like, no, yeah. the most. So actually he, we, he went on campaign with Juice for Jesus and um, we put our marriage on hold for, for a, we called it on the altar in those days. We had to make sure, we wanted to seek the Lord and we wanted to make sure because, it was like, right. Because like when y'all met each other, it was like he had just, he got yes. saved, you got, and it was just kind was of like. Was that hard? No. Well, for, to oh, put to it on put the whole. Yeah, for a year. How long was it on hold for? Um, it, it wasn't, I don't think it was a full year, but he, what happened in that time out mm -hmm. was that I began to sift through my emotions and make sure that he was the one. Because I wanted to make sure, because there was so many there were so many barriers or differences in well, our age and our in our generation yeah. and, and his, in our culture. Yeah. And his so, mother was not for him marrying a Gentile. Yes. No. At all. And I didn't realize that till I met oh. her. <laughs> Tell the story. Yeah. The story oh of gosh. the butter. The butter? Oh, my gosh. Okay, we better get down the Oh, Because Catherine's <laughs> always trying to help when she's in a situation. She's a very and helpful lady. Well, we, after we were married, yeah. we went for um, we went for the whole uh, ceremony. They gave us a post party for for the New York family that couldn't come, but most of them came. Everyone chose family over tradition or over um, prejudice. Culture. Yeah, culture. So there, my my his father was passed, but his mother in law came, and so anyways, they all came except for when she did walk down the wa uh, the aisle. Yeah, talk about the wedding day. <laughs> I don't want to go after that. Talk oh about that. Oh my goodness. Okay. So um, when she was walking miles down, he always did the same thing. He came and got he came and got his mom and walked him down. So here's walking her down the aisle, and she said, "You know, I'm against this." Huh. <laughs> and he's like. The so cross that, that you're against, <laughs> or is this the marriage you're against? <laughs> so we came a long now? way, baby, because because she, I was the one that led her to the Lord at the end of her life. Oh, wow. oh, so God so fulfilled awesome. the prophetic word that He gave me in Bible college that you will be like Ruth to Naomi, but oh. it took longer than was that I hard for you to it not would be. Feel yes, accepted? it was very hard. So when we went to New York after we were married, we went for our engagement party. That's when it hit me, like, oh my gosh, what did I do? And that's the butter story. That's the Butter story. Tell Miles everyone. never told me to be that they're kosher and you don't mix milk and meat. Oh. And so she had a roast, and I said, "Well, do you want me to put some butter on the table?" Oh, no. And it was like a pit, like like the like I don't know. It was like I had said silence, silence. Yeah. I knew it said something. It was like wrong. you said the wrong thing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh. But Becca told me a story, which I'm rewinding back to the wedding. <laughs> but she said that both sides of the family wanted you to get married somewhere else, but you guys chose yeah. the other. Ugly church. Oh, the church is ugly carpet. The burgundy. 70s, burgundy. <laughs> and my mom, I can't find any decorations for that color. What will we do? But, that but was you the, did good, Mom. That you was did the good. church that you guys both got saved in. Mm -hmm. So it was It was special symbolic. to you, and Very, you wanted to be married in, in saved, a church. Saved, baptized yeah. in the Holy Spirit. And yeah, my parents wanted us to go get married at a golf course and have the beautiful wedding, yeah. which my sisters had had. But we just said, no, we just feel like God wants us to, to honor the the altar that he called us from. Well, okay, so now let's get to Miles' parents' <laughs> reaction about all this. What did they think about him becoming Christian? Well, when he went for a year to New York mm -hmm. to work with the Jews for Jesus, he mm -hmm. told them, he told them all about the book of Isaiah, and he mm -hmm. actually said, this is what's happened to me. And he read from the book of Isaiah, and the Holy Spirit came and confirmed his word. And they all were silent, which is a miracle in and of itself, yeah. for quite a long time. And then Aunt Annie said, well, he seems happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so really, they just wanted him to be happy. They wanted him yeah. to be well. They wanted him to move forward in his life. And they knew that the, the death of his dad had caused, pa caused pain. Yeah. yeah. What, what's really neat about this whole story coming full circle is that when Jonathan and Becca got together, yes. he was living in the 
G's for Jesus oh. house. <laughs> yes, <laughs> shout that out is to you. Circle. They're in California. Circle. They're in California. Well, I know you guys have written a book, and yes. it's called it, "When Heaven Hits Home: Ancient Wisdom for Today's Couples." And so, for people watching, what would they get out of that book? They'll get some practical tips just to how to keep your marriage strong, or maybe some some. Um, reconciliation tips, you know, you can mm-hmm. t- how to fight fair, how to um, not take an offense and how to move forward in your marriage. Yeah. Forgive daily. You know, so, so Miles is a marriage and family therapist. So on his side, we both wrote it together. So he's got the more how to's and I got the the juicy details. But uh, you've got a lot, you've got a lot of you guys story in yes. the book. Yes. And so for those watching today, maybe you're believing for your marriage, maybe you have a son or daughter that they're in trouble. What would you say to them? And would this be a good book for them? To absolutely, get? absolutely, yeah. because it's about two people that are so different, finding um, God. And so there's a lot of principles in there um, about how to have a grace-filled marriage. So there's a lot about grace that will flow through it. So it's not about the Jewish traditions. We're just gleaning from those to enhance our faith. We believe that we should be rooted and grounded in love and in faith. And then also in the deeper understanding of where this has all come from. So Mm -hmm. that's part of that. And of course, what was neat about you guys, and now you've passed on to Jonathan and Rebecca, is um, understanding some of those Yes. Jewish traditions, yes. not in a bondage type of way or in a law kind of way. Yeah. In an enriching kind of way. But in an enriching exactly. kind of exactly. way. And incorporate some of those. They're yes. really powerful, aren't they? Very powerful. The blessing and yes. the speaking different. blessing over each other. That's what you do at yes. Shabbat. You yeah. know, husband and wife will speak blessing over each other and their and children. The covenant, the blood covenant. And, and the blood that. covenant, yes. And not to, and, and that, you know, you see how he could keep a people. Miles always says that they didn't, they, that the word kept them. And so the value value of the word is what kept the Jewish people, not the Jewish people keeping the word. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, When Heaven Hits Home, yeah. great book. You want to be sure and pick that up. And uh, I have to tell you, we're out of time. I'm so oh, sorry because it went I by know. so fast. Great story. Um, I want to thank <laughs> Catherine for joining us at the table. Again, remember to pick up a copy of their new book, When Heaven Hits Home. It's available now. And for more from Catherine, you can visit her online at Miles, there's that name, and <laughs> CatherineWeiss.com. Miles and CatherineWeiss.com. If you're watching today, you're having problems in your marriage, or maybe someone close to you is having problems in their marriage, or maybe you're just still waiting for the one. Maybe you're believing God for that husband or that wife. Uh, We want to be in agreement with you over that, and that's why that toll-free number is on the screen. We have prayer partners that are standing by. Sometimes it's just good to pick the phone up and hear another voice and have someone pray with you. So we have that available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If, If you so happen to get a voicemail, just leave your name and your number. We will have someone personally call you back, I promise. You can also submit your prayer request uh, by going to daystar.com and clicking on prayer. I want you to know that we pray over all the prayer requests that come into Daystar literally from around the world. Also, don't forget to join the conversation online by leaving us a comment on Facebook or Twitter. We'd love to hear your thoughts about today's program. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, we hope this is a blessing to you. Be encouraged today. You are going to make it through this situation, whatever you're going through. We love you. See you next time. Bye-bye for today. This has been a Daystar Television production.